And by the way, there's these opiate systems. So when people talk about, you know, that pornography is like, you know, uh, heroin for your eyes or crack cocaine for your eyes, I like to actually say, no, you've actually got that metaphor backwards. Heroin is like injected orgasm. See, it's interesting that we're using pornography through the language and the filter of drugs when really pornography is what we're made for, which is sexuality. Drugs are the artificial thing. But you know, how many sort of, you know, we take a negative, combined with negative gives you a positive, right? Well, we've put the cart before the horse, so to speak. We are made for sexuality. We're not made for drugs. And so pornography in its supernormal stimulus mode is activating not just this high road, but also this low road as well. And we do see that, once again, with plasticity in our place of vulnerability, that we are seeing changes in the way that these rails are structured on this low road. These are the centers that are much more sensitive to these, you know, these dopamine releases. These are centers that are uh, also tied to other neurotransmitters like serotonin. Serotonin, you should be familiar with, is a mood-related uh, neurotransmitter. This is why people will oftentimes use pornography to self-medicate their, their moods. When they're depressed, they'll use it because that orgasm gives you the high that you get with the opiates, but it also gives you the calming that you get, the, the, the sort of connectivity that you feel with another person. We know that it also activates norepinephrine, norepinephrine that causes you to remember these things because these are important things. That memory formation is a low road way of remembering the high road stimulus information, the cues. Remember, the high road's got the cues in context, the low road has the like and the want. And so norepinephrine helps you remember if I were to ask you, do you remember the first centerfold for some of you older folks in the room? Many of you will still say, I remember that. Because norepinephrine stores this in the low road, and it becomes like a neurological tattoo that's difficult for you to unremember or to wipe away. In the same way, we can move away from uh, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, you know, opiates, endogenous uh, opiates, uh, the endorphins that give you that high, to moving away from the brain to other things too, like, well, the hormones that the brain produces like oxytocin, right? Oxytocin, that's a hormone that's released as part of the, the binding process between mother and child or between people when they touch each other physically. Skin-on-skin -skin contact causes a small burst of oxytocin release. And oxytocin is oftentimes referred to as this bonding hormone. But what's interesting is when you look closely at the oxytocin, oxytocin research, oxytocin has a dark side to it. One of the things that oxytocin will also do is it will cause outgroup aggression. It will bond you to the things that you are close to and be aggressive to those things that are outside of that relationship. So while you are viewing pornography and masturbating to it, you're being bound to the pixels. And guess who you get irritated with? Your spouse. Because you're being bound to this mate. This is your mistress, actually and your spouse now becomes someone that you're irritable with. Your children are actually now on the back end of oxytocin. Instead of you being bound to them, you're now seeing that you're aggressing towards those that you normally would be close to. This is this low road.